I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I feel so grateful to have kept in touch with a good number of friends I grew up with and with whom I went to high school, intermediate, and even elementary school. Not really missing a major step in each of their lives decade after decade, with few exceptions, there have been few surprises about where life has taken them. The adults, parents, spouses, professionals, community members they've become seem to fit the trajectory of their lives. There are other friends from those times in my life that for one reason or another, I wasn't able to keep track of. You understand, people move, life takes us in different directions, and we lose touch. Thanks to social media, some of us have been able to reconnect in recent years, but I have to say that missing such a significant time in those people's lives has made their current situations unexpected and seemingly uncharacteristic to me. With so much time disconnected between then and now, I was surprised by a friend who wasn't athletic growing up and is now a very serious triathlete. I didn't expect the quiet and shy friend who seemed to have so little to say to now be in communications, speaking regularly before audiences. And I didn't imagine that the buddy who loathed babysitting and being around every friend's younger siblings, now has a large enough family of their own to field an ice hockey team starting lineup. Of course, people change. People grow and discover new interests and new talents. But imagine someone you used to know, someone you grew up with, comes back home after being away for however many years and they're not who you expected them to be. And more than that, they are making big and astonishing claims about what they can do and who they are. This is the situation in today's reading from the Gospel of John. After the feeding of the thousands, the crowds followed Jesus and his disciples to the other side of the lake. And in the exchange that follows between Jesus and the crowds, Jesus claims he is the bread of life. That those who come to him will never be hungry that those who believe in him will never thirst, that he is the living bread. Eat of it and you shall live forever. And the people, while well, they're like, wait a minute, we know this guy, right? This is Jesus, Joseph and Mary's son. What's he saying about how he came down from heaven? You're who we've been waiting for. You're the one who will make all of this happen for us. Isn't that wild? No, not because of what Jesus is saying. The people don't seem to be tripped up that those who eat the living bread will live forever. The people believe in God and they expect God to send a savior. No, what's, what's wild is this. They don't expect that person to be Joseph and Mary's son, Jesus. Jesus is the bread came down from heaven. This is not the news they were prepared to hear. They were not prepared to accept God working through someone they knew, a guy from the old neighborhood, a human just as they are. How could he be set apart for such a purpose? And the people complain about it. They're angry. They're probably worried too because their faults, their fears, their weaknesses and limitations haven't saved themselves yet. So how could someone so much like them be the one God has sent to answer their prayers for justice and redemption? Can we fault their feelings? When we're looking for help, don't we look for one who is more fill in the blank, stronger, wiser, better equipped, more capable than we are? That's why we need them because they're not like us, right? And when we're looking for God's help? How often do we look for the miracle, for some sort of divine activity which transcends the pursuits and struggles of our everyday mundane common lives? I wonder if that really has become our default mode. 
looking for the astonishing, the spectacular, the big intervention, the massive correction, change and results which come in one big powerful swoop. Yes, of course, God does extraordinary things. God radically transforms. God gives life eternal for the here and now and for the forever. But more often than not, when God is on the move, when God is working in our lives, it happens through ordinary, earthly, common means in subtle, gradual, and bite-sized ways. The crowds around Jesus, their default mode must have been like ours. They expected God's intervention in the world to happen in might, not weakness. They expected God to come in power, not vulnerability. And for justice and righteousness to be delivered through penalty and punishment, not forgiveness and mercy. They weren't expecting that God would become flesh and blood to bring deliverance from all that separates and prevents us from living in the fullness of God's love now and forever. And they certainly weren't expecting that flesh and blood to be Jesus, the kid from the old neighborhood, who was in so many ways like those in the crowd, like you and me. Should we be so surprised about how God works? Maybe. After all, we are a community who gathers in God's name and uses common things like bread and wine and water as outward and visible signs of an inward and spiritual grace that God gives us. Yet thankfully, God's presence and activity in the world does not depend on our expectations or our ability to be unsurprised. You know, earlier this morning at the 8 a.m. service, we celebrated the sacrament of baptism. Through the waters of baptism, raised to the new life of grace, we welcome Jack into the household of God. Using the ordinary common elements of oil and water, water from the tap in our sacristy, God worked, claiming and naming Jack as one of Christ's own forever. Yeah, that Jack born in Reston, who lives over in Hernan. You see, in baptism, God promised to take hold of this ordinary person to make him God's own, to love him and never let him go. And that's not all. God promised to use Jack, to use his abilities and gifts, whatever they may be, in God's work of restoring, healing, and loving this world. You know, God's activity in the sacrament of Holy Eucharist is much the same. God works with ordinary things and ordinary people to provide spiritual food and bite-sized transformation. Now, I know many participating in this online service may be missing this sacrament after so many months of online worship. But still, I trust that you remember you remember that in bread and wine, Jesus gives us himself. In food and drink made of earthly things, flour, water, yeast, and grapes, bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus, God with us. In some churches, after the Lord's Prayer, the celebrant breaks the bread and says, Behold what you are. And the people reply, May we become what we receive. Behold what you are. Become what you receive. These words trace back to St. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo, who sometime in the 4th or 5th century preached a sermon on the Eucharist and said this, You are the body of Christ. In you and through you, the work of the incarnation must go forward. You are to be taken. You are to be blessed, broken, and given, that you may be the means of grace and the vehicles of the eternal love. Behold what you are. Become what you receive. In another sermon, some 16 centuries after Augustine, Rowan Williams, the Archbishop of Canterbury at the time in the early 2000s, preached this. 
It's not only the bread and wine on the table that are transfigured and shot through with the life and glory of God. It is our substance too that is transfigured in the sacrament. We come to the table so that God's glory can be absorbed into our flesh and blood. And the grace of God can reveal the glory of God in us. Behold what you are. Become what you receive. Jack, each of you, me, ordinary us. God chooses each of us, however common, however flawed we are, however unexpected that choice looks or sounds to those who have known us our whole lives, or even those who are getting to know us now. The living bread chooses us to be partners in ministry to the world. We are equipped for that mission in ordinary moments, like when dipped in the waters of baptism, or when we come to a common table to receive bread and wine, or when we hear gospel words read and preached to us. In those ordinary moments, we are transformed a little more fully into the body of Christ. It's wild stuff, is it not? It is wild that God chose to take on flesh and blood and enter the world as a baby, as one of us. It was difficult for the crowds to hear and accept who Jesus was and what his message meant for them and for the world. Yet his word to them was faithful. He was and is the bread of life, given for the life of the world. It is also wild that God continues to move in people today, even people we may be surprised by. Maybe most of all, when God moves in us. So what about you and me? God's word to us in scripture and baptism and communion is faithful. We are always being called and loved into being who we are already to God, needed and beloved. Christ's hands and feet and hearts and voices in the world. Are we ready to become more and more in our corners of the world means of grace and the vehicles of the eternal love for others? I trust God is ready. I trust we are too. Behold what you are. Become what you receive. Amen.